we're going to start out by doing what I call in the book color sanding. And this is uh, entirely new for me. I'm really excited about it. These are ideas that are using watercolor pencils. Now it only works with the watercolor or the aquarelle pencils. And some of these we're going to do on dry paper, some on wet paper. So I'm going to start out with a technique where you actually shave the color onto a dry surface. <clears throat> so in, in the case of these lupins, um, I did an underpainting first, and then I shaved the color onto these dry. So I've got another one here started. Here you can see another beginning. So I chose this one to demonstrate. And what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take just a relatively small round brush and I'm going to do a lupin coming down, starting about in here and working its way down in this direction. So I've got just enough color in my brush so you can see what I'm doing. And when you're painting these lupins, they're kind of like little Pac-Man with a little stem. So we got a little Pac-Man here, another little stem. But what you want to do is every now and then you want to add a Pac-Man right over the stem, the suggestion of one, and then maybe one close to the stem, and maybe a renegade, renegade way, way out here with a stem, and another one over that stem. Think about the design as you're doing this. I would recommend about two inches, and we're now ready to get out those pencils and start sanding. And the important thing is that these areas are wet. So notice I'm backing up with the little color and water in my brush. And I'm going to make sure that all of these areas I just painted in here are still wet. And the first thing I'm going to do is sand some of this kind of golden yellow color over here on my sun side. A red pencil over here on what would be my shadow side. And now I've got a deeper purple color that I'm adding. Now the lupins, you can always see a little bit of green right at the top and sometimes on some of the stems coming through the centers here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of green in there. Now comes the fun part. Just blow it away. <laughs> and what I would do now is continue, maybe do another two inches maybe add another one in here and eventually you've got this contrast between the soft autofocus underpainting and this very crisp yet pretty spontaneous lupin at the end. Now you can also add this concept of color sanding on say a cold press surface. What I showed you just a minute ago was done on a hot press paper. It's very smooth paper. Now this happens to be cold press, which is the reason I can wet it and the colors aren't reactivating. And I'm just going to very quickly show you how convenient it is to be able to maybe add a nice little textural quality. See, especially on these old medieval buildings, how nice it would be just to have a little bit of this soft texture. The whole concept of color sanding, earlier I did it into a very specified area of wet, I only wet selectively. Here now the whole thing is wet so I can just kind of bounce it in wherever I want to add kind of a nice textural quality. So it does work on cold pressed paper but really it only works when you're almost done with the painting because you have to remember now if I come in and start activating this with water see how those colors are now going to melt out. So if you like that technique, of course, you can use it. But generally, I like to add it at the very end just to add a nice little textural flavor. Now, these are some little morning glories that I've done using the paper dry and then wetting the edges to make it look kind of spontaneous. The part that I really want to share with you are these wonderful little entertaining the vines that are holding them onto the trellis. So I'm just going to grab this one very quickly and the paper is completely dry and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the specific leaf. I drew a leaf on here and it's going to have a stem coming down and around. 
So you can see I'm just wetting the stem, my little round brush. Stop, start, stop, start. And it's intertwining all around here. And one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to repeat this lovely orangey color here. So I'm going to grab my sandpaper and I'm going to start with the, the stem part. So I'm gonna whip in here a little bit of this nice orangey color. Up on this side too. Oh, I like it already. It's repeating that lovely color. Then over here, I'm going to add some yellow. This is kind of an off yellow. I think I might add a little brighter yellow over here. Now whenever I do green leaves, I don't like to start with green. I like to work with blue and yellow, the components that make the green. And then I'm gonna add a little of the blue, knowing that when the blue touches the yellow, it's gonna turn into a green. And we can maybe can dull this just a bit here and there. I'm adding a little blue into the orange. Now we're ready to just blow off the excess. Now sometimes you have to come in and do a little touch up, but you have to be very careful with this. So see if I want to, I can pull a little bit of this color out to the edge, maybe a few places that we missed. And that's basically it. But you can see how lively it is. I love the color. I love the whole concept with the spots and the dots. So I hope it works for you.